Hey guys, welcome in, welcome back. This is our 31 Days of Prevention series, which is an opportunity for us to come together to share information, inspiration, and motivation uh, to increase awareness and prevent future and ongoing domestic violence. We started this at the beginning of October. Today is like the 27th or the 28th. We've done a new message every single day of the month. We'll continue through the end of this month. Um, bringing you information that will hopefully help in the event that you um, personally or someone that you know is facing domestic violence and just really doesn't know what to do, doesn't know where to go, doesn't know where to start, just to let you know that we're here to help. Um, my name is Marcy Batiste. I'm the founder and executive director of Nine Seconds. You can find us online at 9seconds.org. Uh, we're a progressive nonprofit organization. We have a heart-centered mission for the work that we do in domestic violence prevention. And we take a very innovative approach, which is why we're doing these videos. Um, sometimes you have to take the message to where the people are because when you're in an abusive situation, people aren't always anxious to ask for help. It can be hard to admit that there's an, an issue. It's hard to admit that you need help sometimes. So keeping all of that in perspective, um, right now, this week, we've started a series um, specifically on making an exit plan, having an exit strategy, um, creating a safety plan for your how you're going to extricate yourself from the house, from the relationship, et cetera. And so we've talked about where you're going to go, how you figure out where you're going to go. And that was in part one. And in part two, we talked about some things to consider to put into your uh, into your exit bag, your safety bag, as, as I like to call it. Um, some people call it a skate bag. You can call it whatever you want. But um, I gave some tips in part two on some things to consider having in that bag. We talked about some places where you can keep it. We talked about some places where you don't want to keep it. So if you haven't, if you haven't caught either of those two videos, um, and safety planning exit strategy from domestic violence is something that you're interested in. Those are available on my YouTube channel. Um, so today we're going to talk about um, actually how you get out alive, right? We talked about where to go. We talked about what to take and how to plan in advance, but. One thing that people often overlook, and this is beneficial in a multitude of ways because you can consider it, hey, Gina, um, you can consider it for fire and other types of, of hazards, carbon monoxide, etc., cetera, um, and domestic violence. You can also um, use this in the event that you're not you're not necessarily leaving the house, but you need to you, you need to stay in it. But still stay as safe as possible and so understanding the layout of your of your house or apartment that you're in wherever you're staying uh, it becomes a little bit more difficult if the abuse is taking place somewhere outside your normal environment so someplace that you're unfamiliar with you're kind of just um, shooting at the stars but as you begin to start thinking in the context of safety planning and exit strategies what I hope will happen is you'll begin to condition yourself to look for these things when you're out in public. So for instance, if you go into a restaurant, um, you know, finding out like, okay, where's my nearest exit? And like I said, these are good for in the case of a fire as well. You know, the, the American Red Cross recommends that everybody have an exit strategy for exiting their home. Same thing for like movie theaters and restaurants because more people, um, they're called to service. I used to volunteer for them when I lived in Salt Lake City. And they, their biggest need is not the huge natural disasters. It's actually house fires. So this, um, this process is going to help you in either case. So, And it's also understanding that piece of it is good because if you're, if you're kind of caught or your kids, if you have young children, they mention that you've been mapping it out, um, explaining to your abuser, no, I'm doing this for, for safety purposes, for, for fire, right? They're, typically, they're not going to think about the fact that you're doing it to get away from them. So keeping that in mind as sort of your go-to backup to explain why you're doing some of the things that you're doing can, can help keep you safe as well. 
So let's dive in. Um, got my trusty notes here. I was I had to write down my thoughts, so I made sure I didn't forget anything, um, which I probably still will, but we're going to do our best, right? Um, and give you as much information as we can. Um, so when we're talking about um, the exit strategy, we're talking about literally how do I get out of the house? And so the very first thing that you want to start thinking about is what kind of dwelling do I live in? You want to think about things like how big is your house? You want to think about is it one story or two stories? If you live in an apartment, you want to think about what floor do I live on? You want to think about, you know, how many how many exits are there before you get to the outside, right? Um, someone who's in a very large home with multiple rooms and you could be, you know, far away from a door needs to have a different safety plan than somebody who just has a small apartment and most of the rooms are easily accessible um, to the front door. Uh, you also need to think about um, things like the layout of furniture, like what's in what rooms, what's possibly in, because remember, this is in the need to grab and go, how do I get there? How do I, what's my quickest way to freedom, which is outside of the dwelling? Um, so you're going to think about what type of house you have. If you're somebody who's in a in an apartment and you're like for me for instance my place is on the second floor so I only have one door and there's a little walkway to get to the stairs uh, other than that it's jump off the balcony fortunately I don't live in a huge building so I probably would be okay if I had to jump but if I had to jump I need to be con con I need to be aware that if I jump straight off my balcony directly in front of my front door, I'm landing on concrete or I'm hitting my head on stairs. So I would technically need to go down a little ways on the, the walkway leading to the stairs and jump down because that's, it's like rocks and bushes and I don't, there might be a cactus down there now that I think about it. Um, so that's just to give you an idea of how in depth you have to start looking at your surroundings. And again, this is, if you're, if you're on, let's say you're on vacation, right? You rent an Airbnb and you're in an abusive relationship. Your partner is volatile. You've been having lots of arguments. You need to be doing this in every environment you're in, whether it's a hotel, whether it's a restaurant, whether it's whatever. You need to be thinking about these things. And so although we're going to talk about your primary dwelling, your house, your home, your apartment, whatever, Keep in mind that all of these things and all of these um, all of these observation points and, and thought points apply to wherever it is that you are because the violence can jump off at any time. And to that point, that includes your workplace, guys. Oftentimes, we forget about the workplace and the link between workplace violence and domestic violence is a very short bridge because if he can't get to you anywhere else, more than likely, he knows you're going to go to work, right? So you have to know in your, in your job and in your workplace, is it elevator access? Is it stairs? Where are the stairwells? How many, how many doorways do I have to get to? Is the stairwell locked? Is it locked after a certain time? Where's my car? Is it in a parking garage? This sounds like a lot. I know. I get it. And that's why we were talking about in part one and part two, doing these things before you need it preparing yourself to make a safe exit that's what all this is leading up to and that's why i broke this down into multiple videos because it's too much to just dump all in one we got to take it in little little tiny bite-sized pieces they say how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time that's how we deal with domestic violence prevention as well one bite at a time one little piece control what we can control but I want you to start thinking in these contexts and under these terms, no matter where you're at. If you're at a holiday party at someone else's house, like I said, if you're on vacation, think about also the things that are around your home, right? Are you, are you near a body of water? Is it a lake? Is it a river? Et cetera, and so on, right? So thinking big picture. 
So now getting back to getting out of the house. Um, we talked about whether it's a one story, two story, first, second floor, whatever apartment. Um, think about, do you lock your doors? I always out of habit come. I didn't when I lived in Dallas for whatever reason, which was weird, but probably because I was in more of a secure community. Um, but I always just out of habit lock my door when I come in. So I know that if I have to get out of my house, that's an extra step that I have to do is to unlock my door. Um, Think about what types of locks do you use if you are um if you are locking the door and you deadbolt it that's an extra step thinking about all of these these terms um think about what doors are locked you know so if you're living in a larger home you might have a patio door a front door a back door a side door garage door all these different things same thing with your windows where are the windows at? Are they locked? What rooms have windows? What rooms don't have windows? Um, that that becomes important if you have to um, seek shelter inside the house. We talk about that in terms of like tornadoes and things like that. So thinking in these terms, guys. Um, and then also when we're talking about um, whether you're on a first floor, second floor, third floor, etc., be thinking about if you're in if you're in an upper floor like I talked about with me on how to get out of my place. Think about um, a couple of other things. I kind of overlooked those when I was when we were talking about it a second ago. But making sure that you know how you're going to get down if you can't jump. So do I have a rope ladder? Do I have an emergency fire escape ladder? Is there a fire escape? Can I use bed sheets? And then if you have kids, everything's compounded because now you've got to think of, of these exit methods. How independently can my children execute this safety plan? Because if you've got multiple kids, it's going to be pretty difficult if you're trying to get down from a second story, third story, fourth story with three small children in tow plus your exit bag and, and other things, right? So the plan that you map out has to be specific to your family needs. So you can't just take somebody else's safety plan and be like, oh yeah, I'll just do what they do. No, you have to make sure that your kids can, can, can use those things. Can they get out independently? Do you have to carry them? Keeping all that stuff in mind when you're coming down from a second, third or fourth story um, building, that becomes a really, really big part of, you know, how do I get out alive? How do my children get out alive? Right. Again, still applies even if it's to, you know, fire safety and that sort of thing. Um, thinking about where is your vehicle at? When I was assaulted, um, it actually started in my car and I thought, well, if I get home, I can pull into the garage and my garage door leading from the garage to the house is never locked. If I can beat him into the house, I can lock the door and then shut the laundry room door and lock that and he can't get in. Well, theoretically, my plan worked. I wasn't thinking that he would kick the door down. So you have to think about that too. Like, okay, I can lock the door, but what's the door made out of? What's the door frame made out of? I had a really, really thick wooden door from that led from my garage to my laundry room inside my house. I didn't think about the door frame. The freaking door frame completely came un, un, unloosed and that's how he ended up kicking the door in. So that's what we always say, guys. When people say, just leave, why doesn't she just leave? And we say, it's not. Ju it's just not that simple. This is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Nothing about domestic violence is simple. Exiting is not simple. It's one of the most dangerous times. And that's why we have to do the planning ahead of time before it's an emergency. A grab and go, run out the house is our last resort. Hopefully all the safety planning has been done because if you, even if you have to do the grab and go, this part of it, you got to make sure you've, you've locked this down. You got to make sure you know how you're getting out and how you're getting your kids out safely. Um, so.
think about where the car is at, garage. Um, if you're in a workplace, is the parking garage, how far is the parking garage? Is there help between you and them? Is the parking garage isolated? What time of day? Is there a gate to get out of the parking garage? Or can you just drive straight out? All of that has to go into your safety planning, guys. And I'm putting, don't worry, I'm putting all this stuff in a book. It'll be free. It'll be available on our website. I don't have it up there yet, but I will be putting all of these tips and all this information into the book and it'll be completely um, free of charge. Um, thinking about your car. Um, where's your keys? Where's your purse? Where do you keep them? Where are they in relationship to the door? And where's your vehicle in relationship to the door on the other out, outside? Because again, the goal is to get away alive and free, right? Um, if you have, if you have done your your safety bag that we talked about yesterday, if you have your safety bag, where do you keep it? Where is it at? And that was one of the things that we talked about yesterday. So keeping that in mind, um, we talked about like how old are your kids? How independent are they? How much of this can you share with them? But here's the thing. Even if you have small kids, if you practice these things, then the kids can learn how to do them. It's just like when um, I grew up in Iowa and we used to do tornado drills. Now, unfortunately, they do active shooter drills, right? And they start doing them with young kids. If you include your kids in on this safety planning, they're less likely to need as much help from you to get out depending on their age obviously infants toddlers a little bit different story but even with a two-year-old a three-year-old if you start walking them through this plan and like i said tell them it's for in case the house catches on fire the point is to get them to understand how to do these things and for you all to be able to get out safety and for you to be able to get all the other stuff you need to get facilitated and for them to be as independent in the process as possible um, we talked about what if, what are the doors made of? Um, what if I can't get out? What if I can't get out? I'm being assaulted. I'm being attacked. What if I can't get out? That was my story, right? He kicked in my door, held me hostage in my house and assaulted me for several hours. I was, so I got in the house. So there was a hallway that went to like my formal dining room, living room area, and then the kitchen um, open entertainment area that led to the back patio was off to the side. I was holding on to the stair railing that led up to my upstairs to keep him from taking me into the area where the family room was and the kitchen was. Why? Because there were knives in there. There were knives in there and three weeks prior whole other subject his um his cousin had just murdered his girlfriend who was pregnant at the time stabbed her 37 times so in my mind that's all i'm thinking about i can't let him take me into that room and then i i was having flashbacks there was like an old oprah episode back in like the 80s and this um former police officer was on there and he was talking about kidnapping basically but he was like don't let him take you to another destination but when you're talking about safety planning in your home, another destination could be another room. So my goal was to stay in the living room because I was the closest to the front door and the door to the garage. I didn't want to be in that back area because the kitchen was there with knives. There was a patio door that went out to the pool. I didn't want you to drown me. I don't want you to stab me. So I got to stay out of that room. This is how your brain has to work, guys. If you're going to survive an assault or an attack by an abuser, you have to understand these things about your house, the layout of it, and how to get out alive, right? The only reason I, I swear, the only reason I was able to get out alive is because I never let him take me out of the room from the front door. I made sure he did not, he was not going to be able to take me to the back of the house. So I fought for that and I fought to hold on to my phone. My phone was in my purse. I hold on to my purse. I'm holding on to the stairwell. I know you can't take me to that room and you can't get my purse away from me because that's my only way to call for help, right? That's how your brain has to work, guys. You have to keep these things 
in mind. They have to stay in the forefront of your mind, which means you have to practice them. Practice them when your abuser is not around. Like I said, say that it's for fire safety. I don't care what you call it. Hurricane safety, depending on your location. I don't care what you call it, but you have to run through these exercises. You have to practice them over and over and over and over and over again, because I promise you, if push comes to shove and this happens, you are only going to be operating off of instinct. You will only be operating, operating off of instinct. Another example. I used to be a bank manager back home in Iowa. I was robbed four times. We did robbery training every single year. I knew off of instinct what to do in the event of the robbery. So when the guy put the gun to my, to my forehead in one of them, I knew how to respond In, intuitively. It was instinctive because we had rehearsed it. We had practiced it. And y'all have to do the same thing and take this level of seriousness and this level of precaution if you want to get out alive. You have to do these things. Um, so rehearse. Uh, if you have small kids, make sure they can call 911. I know everybody talks about that. Everybody says it, but you'll be surprised at how many toddlers don't know how to use a phone. They can play games on it. They can navigate YouTube. They don't know how to call 911. That's a problem. It's a problem. When you teach them how to call 911, teach them what 911 is and what happens though so that they don't do it just to call and talk to somebody. They need to understand what it's for, when you use it. We talked about yesterday, um, in yesterday's video in part two, about um, making sure that they have a level of understanding and that, that maybe you, you use a safe word. So then they know, okay, if, if mommy says the, the, the word, the help word, not the safe word, hold on, anyway. If she says the help word, then I need to do 911. But that only comes through practice, you guys. It only comes through practice. And I'm telling you firsthand, I, I knew to monitor my situation and know my surroundings and all that because of my banking background. And I wrote disaster contingency plans. I wrote disaster recovery plans for an entire bank. I sat on the Arizona infrastructure um, board here in, in, in Arizona, where we talk about safety planning for the entire community, right? I know this stuff, but when it happened to me, when I got out of the house, I, I was afraid to call 911. I only, I didn't even, I didn't, I, I couldn't even use my contacts list in my phone. I dialed a number of a friend that I had, had had for like 20 years because that was the only number that I could remember. Fortunately, he was able to kind of calm me down, talk me off the ledge and get, get my mind refocused so that I could escape and get away. But even knowing what I know, being a domestic violence advocate wasn't something that I was at that point, right? I didn't know as much about DV then as I do now, almost 10 years later. But I knew about safety plans. I knew about disaster contingencies. I knew about exit plans. But because I had never rehearsed it, I'd never practiced it, I couldn't execute on it. And it, I, it almost killed me. That could have cost me my life. Had he not fled because he thought I was on the phone with the police. So he fled. And his last words to me were, if anybody comes for me, if I get arrested, something happens to my family, I will come back, I will find you, and I will kill you. I knew I couldn't call 911, but I didn't know what to do. Because I hadn't practiced. Nobody gave me this information. So when we talk about innovative approaches, guys, nine seconds, we do what we do and we provide what we provide because we've been there by survivors for survivors. We're sister survivors. And so I, I'm committed to give you everything that I wish I'd had. Every resource available, that every, every piece of information that's in my arsenal to make sure that you have it. So to make sure that you're safe, to make sure your children are safe. Um... And then the final thing before I get off of this video um, is to 
make sure, and we did this, you know, like I said, we did this in corporate, but making sure that you have a meetup place where your kids know if we get separated, this is where you need to go. We need to meet up here. If mommy, if you get separated from mommy, this is where you go. And that's where they can find, that's where mommy will be. And if mommy, if mommy is stuck in the house, you still go there. If you've, if you've taught them how to use a, a phone or a burner, if you have a burner phone, it, it's so much that goes into this, guys. I can't even, but they know what to do when they get there. If it's a, if it's a neighbor's house, they know to ask for help. If they, if they've had to exit, exit and go to the safe place, then they need to know what to do when they get there. You wait for mommy and you ask, you bang on a door or you scream for help, but you wait here for help to come, right? You've got to drill that into your kids. Um, one other thing too, uh, if you have elderly parents, if you have children with disabilities, if you have disabilities, um, you know, it, it, blind, um, walking challenges, hearing challenges, whatever the case may be, make sure you allow for those in your get out alive strategy. That exit strategy, this safety plan, how do I get out alive? Includes you and everyone who you're responsible for. And so you have to include them in the process. You have to include them in the rehearsals. You have to include them in the exercises. So this isn't something that you just say, oh, one day I'm gonna write down my safety plan and that'll be it. It's not a one and done. You're constantly reviewing it. You're constantly practicing it. You're constantly keeping it top of mind and you're constantly making sure that your children and anyone else who you are responsible for knows this information. They have to know where the safe place is. They have to know what to do to get there. They have to know how to get out and how to get there. And then I keep saying it's one final thing, um, but this for sure is the final thing. If you have to seek shelter inside the house, think about all of these things when you're figuring out where you're gonna go inside your house. Don't go to kitchens because there's knives stoves, weapons. Don't go into a room where an abuser is known to have weapons. Don't go someplace, if you can help it, that has um, toxic chemicals that can be poured on you, thrown into your face, blinding you. And try not to go into rooms that have no doors and windows. Like don't, don't go hide out in a bathroom. Don't go hide out in a bathroom. Your kids maybe can hide in a closet, in a cabinet, something like that. Um, but but even then, it's better if you train them to go where you're going to go because you want them with you. So their instinct should, should always be to meet up where I'm gonna find mommy at. That's where I need to go. So keep all these things in mind, guys. Like I said, I'm working on the book right now. Um, it's called Making a Safe Exit. And all of these tips, all of these strategies, there'll be worksheets in the book for you to be able to fill out and sit down and really put some, some thought into what you're going to do, how you're going to stay safe and stay, how you're going to get out alive. So um, I always ask, will you share? Can you share? If you hear something, share something. Today I'm demanding it just like I've demanded it for the last two days. Share this out. If you're watching it live, share it out. If you're watching it on the replay, share it out. You find it on YouTube, share it out. If you find it on LinkedIn, share it out. I don't care where you find it, how you get it, but share it. Because I guarantee you there's someone on your timeline who needs this information, who doesn't know where to go find it, and who's never thought about most of the things that we're talking about in, these ser in this series. So there's part one, part two, and part three um, will be uploaded today. Today is part three. And they'll all be on my YouTube channel. Um, we'll probably do at least one more um, tomorrow in this in the in the Making a Safe Exit series. So if you've missed any of them, you can go to youtube.com forward slash Marcy Batiste. And um, these videos are all on there. The Making Safe Exit videos are all on there. You can recognize them. They got a black cover. 
so they all look the same. Um, and then they're labeled part one, part two, part three. It doesn't matter what order you watch them in. And what else was I going to say? Um, oh, and as always, guys, if you need me, reach out either through Facebook Messenger, the contact page on 9seconds.org, the contact page on marcybatiste.com. Um, I've got a team that's willing, ready, and able to help you to the best of their ability to answer questions for you, to help direct you on resources. Um, they're working now on getting all the resources and things like that online. We've got books that are going to be added online as I get them written and things like that. So, um, you know, this was information that I help people with, but it really dawned on me like this information being inside my head doesn't help anybody unless they're in contact with me. And so that's why I was like, you know what? You just need to put this in a book, make that a priority to get that book done. So um, like I said, it'll be an ebook. It'll be downloadable from the website. Lisa says, yes, we are. She's one of our board members. She's one of our support advocates. She's an amazing resource for domestic violence. She's been through it. She's a sister survivor. She's written a book. Um, when I tell you guys, this, this team at nine seconds is all survivors, four survivors, um, but we're more than that. And we want you to be more than that. We want you to become domestic violence champions where, where you can tell your story, where you can share your story, you can put it out there and you can help save somebody else's life. So that's it for me today, guys. Um, take care as always. Stay well, stay blessed, stay happy, stay healthy. And most important of all, stay safe and share this video out. Talk to you guys tomorrow.